Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Amir Fikri bin Kamaruddin I am from class KSC 2206C And my metric number is 2018-67979 Assalamualaikum My name is Muhammad Izzuddin bin Azhar I am from KSC 2206C My metric number is 2018-654054 Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Shakirin bin Jamaluddin I'm from class KAC 2206C And my metric number is 2018-410698 My name is Muhammad Arif Akmal bin Azli I am from KAC 2206C My metric number is 2018-272422 Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Muhammad Zaid bin Suhaimi. My metric number 2018802162. I am from the KAC 2206C. A branch office is not a tax resident. Thus, they cannot be the beneficiary of any tax exemptions or government incentive available for other companies in Malaysia. Meanwhile, a subsidiary is a tax resident and liable to a local tax. A subsidiary subsidiary also entitled to various tax benefits and deductions like pioneer status, investment tax allowance and reinvestment allowance. A subsidiary is an independent body and a separate legal entity. It can frame its own rules and regulations. This enables Rectum to better manage their tax burden, take advantages of Malaysia's favorable tax regulations and mitigate the effects of tax rules that could threaten the parent company's profitability. So in my opinion, it is better to act a subsidiary rather a branch. This is because they can have their separate accounts and frame rules according to the company's legal policy. For question 1b, Recton PTE LTD should commence business during the financial end the 31st December 2019 because Recton could incur capital expenditure as early as possible so that it would fall into the tax relief period of 5 years for investment tax allowance in order to maximize its ITA claim. This is because PIA 1986 does not provide for extension of ITA incentive to be given to a company for another five years. For the 1C, is uh, the best incentive that can be significantly reduced uh, tax liability claiming investment tax allowance is a double deduction. Double, double deduction where the expense incurred on the certain activities can be set off twice against taxable profit. Among those uh, activities uh, include for disabled person All expense incurred during work or training or approved training can be deducted twice. Deductible in the two time are the business income at adjusted business income, where in the end will result a lower income. Low charge will be qualified in a lower tax rate. All these incentives can be claimed as long they carry on. The For question 2A, The machinery may be disposed of after two years of ownership required to avoid the clawback of capital allowance. Since Pamka bought the stamping machine on 1st January 2019, they should sell the machine on 1st June 2021. Question 2. Uh, B. The way to save tax on the disposal of the stamping machine is a Pamka should recognize which one asset uh, make or generate balancing allowance. The asset should be disposed at the end of the year instead of the next year in a purpose to shelter adjusted income. Stamping machine generate balancing charge. This stamping machine must be postponed to the next year instead of the disposal at the current year and to the defect liability. Under question 2C and 2D, the first one is 2C. The question is state whether Dalmco 
uh, group of companies can make use of the group relief to reduce tax liabilities in years assessment 2020 and 2021. So there are some, some circumstances that need to be fulfilled by the Dalmo companies to be eligible uh, for the tax relief loss which is the claimant and surrendering company must be resident. Both of the companies need to be to have the same accounting period and the companies needs to pay capital more than 2.5 million. So Dharma Group acquired more than 70% of the shares of its uh, subsidiaries. The first one is between Dharma Berhad and Dham C, SDN Berhad. Both of the companies are eligible for the group relief loss in 2020 because Dham C already finished claiming the pioneer status after five years of operations but in 2021 the company does not eligible for the tax relief unless Dam C wants to acquire KY's SDN Berhad. The second one is between Dam Mo Berhad uh, and Dam and uh, Palm Car Sendirian Berhad. Both company are not eligible for tax relief because Palm Car Sendirian Berhad paid capital less than 2.5 million. And the last one is between Dalmo Berhad and Ruba Sendirian Berhad. Ruba Sendirian Berhad are not eligible to claim the tax relief but the company can be eligible if they don't enjoy any incentives. For 2D, uh, the question is, advise Ruba on the best method of financing its purchase of new machineries and also state your reason. So, uh, Ruba can only claim capital allowance based on the full cost of qualifying asset if the company purchased its machinery through term loan. Ruba also entitled to claim IA and AA on the first year and AA for each subsequent years until full relief is given for the qualifying capital expenditure. Uh, Ruba is entitled to claim the full leasing charges as a revenue expense if the company purchased machinery by leasing. Ruba will also entitled to receive revenue deduction in the year of incurred. If Ruba has current year business loss, the lease expenditure will increase Ruba's business loss. So as a conclusion, uh, Ruba should use a leasing to purchase the new machineries as it gives more benefit compared to using term loan. Thank you. Hello, I am Arif Akmal. So, I'm going to present question 2E. Question 2E asks us to advise Damchi on which company should be taken over. Is it TSG Syndrome Rahat or KY Syndrome Rahat? And then, the method of the accusation. So, here we go. So how to answer this question? First of all, you need to make sure Damchi Sinan Berhad choose either one of the company. So here, Damchi Sinan Berhad should take over TSG Sinan Berhad rather than KY Sinan Berhad because Damchi Sinan Berhad is very confident they can turn around TSG Sinan Berhad into a profitable company within one year as they have the expertise because of similar nature of business. And TSG Sinan Berhad is a pioneer's company while KY Sinan Berhad is a loss making company and have a huge amount of unabsorbed loss. The tax attributes such as unabsorbed loss or tax incentive remain with the target company and companies allowed to carry forward their accumulated tax loss up to 7 years and unutilized capital allowance to be set off against their future business income. While for domain company, the accumulated tax losses and unabsorbed capital allowance can be disregarded if there is more than 50% change in the shareholding. KY Sinan is still not the best choice for Damchi Sinan Berhad to take over because Damchi Sinan Berhad and TCAG Sinan Berhad have a similar nature in business. The question also asks us about the method of acquisition. So, the method of acquisition that is suitable to use is the method of acquiring shares. The advantage of acquisition by shares is first in a share acquisition. The acquirer is exposed to liabilities and exposure in the target company. The acquirer will need to carry out a due diligence exercise on the target company's business in a stock acquisition compared to an asset acquisition. As Damchi Sinan Berhad has a similar nature of business with TSG Sinan Berhad, it is suitable for Damchi Sinan Berhad to use the method of acquisition by shares. So that's all from me for question 2E. Thank you.